Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. It's where we combine spirituality and practicality to help you live a life of purpose and joy. We got a whole bunch of callers on hold, so it's going to be really interesting to see what their questions are and see what spirit has to say for an answer. You know, spirit works through me and with me. So you get kind of a combo platter when you call into this show. You get spirit working through me, you get my input too. So it's just like a buffet of psychicness, as I always say. If you're on uh, YouTube, we're doing the live stream. We're at Ask Julie Ryan. And you can put a question in the chat. We'll be taking questions from there as well. And if you want to have a conversation with me, go to AskJulieRyanShow.com and go to the reaction section and raise your hand and we'll know you have a question. A couple of quick things. I give away a free session with me each month valued at 250 bucks. In order to be in that drawing, just go to wherever you listen to the show, whether on YouTube or any podcast channel, we're on all of them, and just leave a review. Let me know what you think of the show. Let me know if you like it, if you don't like it, whatever, and you'll be entered into that drawing. Again, I do that once a month. And I also started doing a drawing once a month for a free scholarship to my Angels and Enlightenment training class. So in order to be entered into that drawing, you just subscribe to my YouTube channel at Ask Julie Ryan. So those of you listening in the car or while you're making dinner or whatever, just when you get a minute, go to the Ask Julie Ryan channel on YouTube and subscribe and you'll be entered into that. So free session, free class each month we're going to give away. Speaking of classes, my big uh, angelic attendant training class, which I do live twice a year, once online and once in person, is going to be May 18th and 19th. Love to have you join us. It's starting starting to fill up and I'll be doing that live via Zoom. Go to AskJulieRyan.com slash training and sign up for the eight angelic attendant training. Lots of angels here. I have to keep my angels straight. One more thing. We're going to, I'm starting to do something different this week. And when we have people on the show, sometimes they'll send me an email afterwards and say, okay, here's what happened. And it's a follow-up. So when I get those, I read them and I got a really good one from a caller who called in a couple of weeks ago. So you're going to want to stay tuned because I'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. I actually had a thing happen this afternoon too that relates to a client. So I'll fill you in on that. So let's just go to our first caller. Looks oh, like, hi. is it Lee? Can you hear me? Hi. Hi, Lise. It's, Lee. it's Lisa. Can you hear Lisa. me? Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Can you tilt your camera down just a little hi. bit? I can... I can't see your face. I can only see. Can you can you tilt your camera down? Perfect. There we go. Wonderful. Welcome. Where are you located? Where are you, Lisa? Naples, Florida. Can you hear me? Naples. Okay. Yeah, I can. Naples, Great. Florida. You got it. You got a question for me? I sure do. My nine-year-old, okay. six-pound Yorkshire Terrier. I've been told has a collapsed trachea. He is Ooh. coughing and gagging for several minutes, different times of day, could be in the middle of the night. Is there anything I can do to help him? Yeah, what's his name and what kind of dog is he? A Yorkshire Terrier. Oliver. Okay. He's right here. Oh, let's see him. Bring him on so we can see him. I'm sure he's darling. Yeah, if you can hold him up, that would be great. Oliver, Oliver come here. Okay, I'm going to connect to while she's getting the dog. I just think it'd be fun to see him. Here he is. Hi, Oliver. Oh my gosh, he's darling. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. He's such a good boy. He's darling. Okay, so here we go. How this works is I raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit. I'm gonna watch a laser beam come from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama, Lisa. It's gonna hook into you in Naples. And then we're gonna have a hologram 
of Oliver. I'll hooked into Oliver from you and let's see what's going on. Was did he have an accident or something? Why did his trait collapse? Do the doctors know? No. No, I researched it and it says it can be genetic. They're not sure. Mm -hmm. Um but he does I was suspicious about groomers with the thing they put on and it said no, that's not what causes it. Okay. All right. Okay, here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama. I got you, got Oliver. I'm looking in his tray. So it's not collapsed all the way, obviously. He wouldn't be able to breathe. But what I'm watching happen, the healing, Lisa, is I'm watching, imagine like a little tube, almost like a piece of PVC pipe, but it's flexible, is going in there to hold it open. Okay, and then mm -hmm. there's stem cell energy getting put in there kind of to glue it in place almost. And you know, my analogies are to give us a human frame of reference for this energy healing that I'm describing. And I want you to picture it and everybody watching, whether we're doing a healing on an animal or a person, I want you to envision what I'm talking about as I describe it, because that's going to help the healing integrate into Oliver and integrate into a person if we're doing a healing on a person. And since time doesn't exist in the spirit world, time's a human creation. If you're listening to this show live, like on the YouTube live stream, or if you're listening to it a month from now, a year from now, the healing is still happening. So we're all working together to help Oliver heal. So I hope that helps. Let us know how he's doing. I sure will. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for calling, Lisa. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye-bye. You, you bet. Bye, Oliver. <laughs> Ruff! <laughs> He's darling. Oh, my gosh. If you want to have a conversation with me, ask julieryanshow.com. If you want to join on the live stream, we're at Ask Julie Ryan on the live stream, and you can put a question in the chat. And I'm answering questions from there as well. So let's see ask? who our next caller is. Hi, Cindy. Can I ask? Hi. How Hi. you doing? Thank you for calling. I'm great. How are yeah. you? Terrific. Thanks. Where are you? I'm, um, I'm from Duxbury, Massachusetts. Oh, terrific. How are things up there? Beautiful. Beautiful. Great. It's nice. The weather's some... about to get warm. Yeah. You got some stuff blooming up there, I hear. We sure do. We sure do. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. You got a question for me? I do. My question is, I wondered if you could tune in with my um, two and a half year old son, uh, grandson, Lincoln. And, yeah. And um, see what's there with Lincoln. He wakes up quite a bit at nighttime and in the morning time. And um, yeah, so I wanted to see if you can get anything, pick up anything with Lincoln that's going on. Emotional, physical. Sure. Is he close by you? Where does he live? Yes, he does. I, I see him every day. He lives 11 minutes away. Oh, aren't you fortunate? Oh my gosh. I, very I love fortunate. his name. He's very in tune with Mimi, yes. I love it. He calls yeah. you Mimi? Mimi, yes. Mimi. Beautiful I'm boy. a Mimi too. I'm a Mimi too. Oh. So, I tried to be that? a Grammy, but he just said, came out Mimi. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have uh, five grandsons through marriage. They're all step grandsons, but they're mine. You know, I was there when the youngest three were born, so they're mine. So, okay, here we go. Here comes my latest being from Sweet Home, Alabama. I want you to picture what I describe because then you're my helper and everybody listening picture too. So that's one of the beauties of calling into the show, Cindy, is you get a big old group healing. It, when when you call into the show and, and ask for healing. It's kind of like the power of prayer. You know, you get a lot of people thinking and focusing on one thing, and then you get all that energy going to help that person. So, Thanks. okay, got you, Lincoln. Oh, he's darling. All right, Lincoln, mm -hmm. I'm talking to your Mimi. Do I have permission to scan you? <laughs> he said, nope, <laughs> nope, just like that. <laughs> all right, we'll talk to him for a minute. I always ask, Cindy, I always ask permission if somebody's wanting me to scan another person. I don't do it with animals, but I do with humans. 
because I believe it's mm -hmm. a it's an invasion of their privacy. Even fetuses, I ask their permission to scan them yes. when they're still in utero. Okay, so let's talk to him. Lincoln, why are you, we can talk to a spirit though. I don't have a problem with that. It's kind of like if you're talking to somebody that has pneumonia, they're gonna tell you how they feel, but you're not looking at their chest X-ray without their permission. That's kind of how I, mm. how I rationalize talking to their spirit. Lincoln, why are you waking up in the middle of the night? I'm cold and I'm hungry. Mm. He's cold and he's hungry. Uh, so those big sleeper jammies, you know, that, that have feet in them and you zip them up all the way. Is he in one of those when he sleeps at night? He's in um, a light one. Um, and some of his, some of them are lighter. Yeah. Okay. I would get him a heavier one. He's cold. Okay. He's telling me. And, and if he has a wet diaper and he's cold, I mean, that's just going to magnify it and, and uh, ramp that up. Okay. Is that the, you're hungry. Why are you hungry? Because <laughs> they don't feed me enough food. Okay. Uh, I would, I would try some more protein <laughs> with him at night before, okay. you know, for his dinner, I would up his protein. I would up his good fats and see if you can do that. And um, kids will wake up when they're cold and hungry. And so many times these kids get hungry because they, all they're eating is chicken nuggets. And it doesn't really have much nutrition in there, but you gotta give them enough <laughs> protein and fat diet. to hold he's, them. He, he's got a great diet for, I mean, his, his parents, he's hardly on any sugar. He eats a lot of, you know, great. fruits and vegetables and, you know, great. they serve him meats. He's really, he doesn't even really have chicken nuggets. He eats what they eat, fish and great. You know, meat. And, Great, yeah. great. Give him more protein and fat is what I'm hearing from spirit and, and get him one of those big sleeper jammies, those sleeper, okay. they, you know, I mean, they have legs in them at two and a half. He yeah. doesn't need the bag ones, but I, I would dress him more warmly, dress him in a warmer set of jammies when he goes to bed and see if that helps. Awesome. Okay. okay. Let us know thank how it goes. All right. Thank you. Nothing to digest with him or anything. I got what I got is what I gave okay. you. Yeah, he's cold Beautiful. and he's hungry. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Thank you. All You're right. welcome. All righty. If you want to have a conversation with me, ask julieryanshow.com. If you want to come in on YouTube, we're at Ask Julie Ryan. You can put a question in the chat. So always here. Always ask, excited to hear what your question something? is. Yeah. So let's see who our next caller is. Okay, we got M I L K Skin. Hi, Julie. I'm Shannon from Florida. Any messages from my mother, Michelle, who has passed on? Okay, hi, Shannon. Okay, Mom, Michelle. So I'm connecting to you in Florida, and then I'm going from you to your mama. She's right there on your right. They come in right away. This is random and they come in with just random stuff. She's talking about your bathtub. Do you have a leak in the bathtub? She's saying, check the bathtub. I don't even know if you have a bathtub in your house, but that's what she's saying. Check the bathtub. And a lot of times our deceased loved ones in heaven will give us very practical advice. I've heard everything from the pool plumbing is leaking. Check this part of the pool plumbing to my favorite is, a mom was telling her daughter, who's my client, you need to throw out your peanut butter. <laughs> and she said, what? And the mom's spirit said, yeah, throw out your peanut butter. So while we were on the phone, my client went and looked in her pantry and sure enough, the peanut butter had expired a year ago. So she was using it to feed her kids and her mom from heaven was going, throw out the peanut butter and get some new. So you just never know. So that's what I got. She wants you to check your bathtub. Hope that makes sense to you. This is from Trisha. Trisha in Western Mass. My wife, Ann, 71, suffers from severe headaches and neck pain for the last six plus months. She was, sub she was prescribed muscle relaxers for the headaches and necks. 
neck pain, but it keeps recurring. Okay, Tricia, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect into you and then I'm going to go from you to Anne. So here we go. Comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to you in Massachusetts. Got you. We had two Massachusetts girls here already this morning or this morning, duh, this evening. Okay, got you. Going to Anne. Anne, do I have your permission to scan you? I'm talking to Tricia. She said, absolutely. Okay, good. I'm seeing yeast overgrowth. I, I think it's a gut related thing with the headaches, the neck. I just watched the chiropractic adjustment happen. So I would find a chiropractor, uh, gut, she's got yeast overgrowth. Work with Dr. Maria Amasanti. D-R-A-M-A-S-A-N-T-I dot com, Amasanti dot com. She will help and get her gut healthy. That will help relieve the headaches and stop them. So hopefully that will help. I keep teasing Dr. Marie and saying, do you want to put me on the payroll? Because I recommend her so much. <laughs> but she hasn't yet, but I'll see what I can do about that. She's really, just, I'm kidding. She's really that good though. D-R-A-M-A-S-A-N-T-I dot com. Tell her I sent you. Okay, let's see who's next. Hi, Trudy. Hi. How you Hi. doing? This is, I'm doing, I'm doing fine. And I'm in uh, great. Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Oh, great. Wonderful. Got yeah. a question for me? I sure do. And uh, this is uh, obviously the angelic attendants are with me tonight because I got through to you because of my sister, Kat. Um, I did get permission from her to contact you, and I pray that you can go and help her. She has got something that we don't even know. The doctors don't even know what it is. She's been okay. sick for over a year. Right now, um, we're taking her to, to the hospital tomorrow. She's got a hypercalcemia. She's got histocytes in her bone marrow that are killing her red blood cells, so she has to go for blood transfusions. Right now, her kidneys are on the verge of shutting down. She's got a oh, mass boy. behind her kidney that they can't even... Uh, um, they can't even access and we don't know okay. they don't know what's going on with her they don't know if it's cancer they don't know if it's autoimmune they don't know what to do with her and she is not doing well so i just need your She's help miserable. and all the angels yeah oh yeah you sweet you sweet sister to call in for her okay here we go comes my laser beam from sweet home alabama heading up to you in canada got you going to cat cat mm -hmm. i'm talking to your sister she goes i know it's fine oh perfect good job setting that up <laughs> Okay, let me shoot. Her. I can see the mass behind her kidney. It looks malignant to me, Trudy. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's what I'm seeing. So malignancy looks to me like it can look like a brown mass or black. It can uh, have a sticky consistency, kind of like think of hot asphalt that they use to pave a road. Sometimes it's sticky like molasses. When I see tumors that are benign, they look pink to me. Your sister's does not. So what I'm doing is encapsulating it. She's not dying at the moment, so that's the good news. Because if her spirit was out of her body in the one of the 12 phases of transition that I talk about in my book, Angelic Attendance, I can't scan them because the spirit's the power source for the body. So it's always exciting when, you know, we, I can get them on my radar and scan them because I mean, she's not dying at the moment. So we've got that. So I've encapsulated that tumor and I'm watching it get removed. I'm watching a, um, just a tune up on her kidneys and both of them. Imagine there are spirals of energy spinning inside her kidneys. Think of the Milky Way galaxy, that spiral versus a mm -hmm. vortex. This would be like a two dimensional spiral. So I'm watching that happen. We're going in and seeing what's going on. We're just going to do a um, flushing of her, just all her blood in her vascular system. There are two holes that have opened on the bottom of her feet. Imagine her vascular system, Trudy, looks like a network of aquarium tubing. And imagine that all the blood's in there. So what we're doing is we're, we're just 
flushing the blood. It's like we're cleaning the blood. The blood's staying in her system, but we're flushing the toxins out and they come out through the bottom of her feet. So we've got that going. We are doing a lymph cleanse. Imagine there's a, a vertical tube that is, uh, reminds me of those tubes at the drive through at the bank where you put the container in and it sucks it into the building. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, those okay. pneumatic tubes. And and they're all her lymph fluid, which is an amber color, it's kind of globby looking. It's in that tube and any of the toxins are coming out through the bottom of her feed. So we've got that going to heavy metal detox. She's getting a full Monty here. Two big U-shaped magnets on either side of her joined in the middle. You know, those big silver and red magnets, the yeah. U-shaped magnets, mm -hmm. they're joined around her. Yep. They're in the middle. They're going up and down her body and they're pulling out metallic particulates. And then they turn a quarter of a turn, Trudy, till they get all the way around her body. The metallic particulates look like little pieces of glitter. They can be sparkly mm -hmm. glitter. They can be dull glitter. And I see these little strands of metal that come out in this heavy metal detox. That reminds me of a strand out of a, a pad of steel wool, like a Brillo pad. <laughs> do you remember those? Back yeah, in the I day, do. for those of you that don't know what, what we're talking about, it's they yeah. used to be used to scrub pots and pans, right? So we've got that going on. Okay. All right. I, you know, that's, that's a big healing for her. Will she recover from this? How young is Kat? She's just turned 64. So she's young. All right. Uh, the older I get, the younger that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Will she survive this? Yes. Again, I would call on Dr. Maria. Dr. Maria Amasanti, have her help help Kat figure out what's going on. The immune system's based in the gut. So okay. uh, I think she'd be a really good resource. She's in London. She works with people around the world via Zoom, but she's an Oxford educated general practitioner, MD. She does functional medicine, holistic medicine, naturopathic medicine. She's graduated in my class. She does energy medicine and she is just mm -hmm. a doll. She will be your favorite doctor you've ever oh. talked to in your whole life. So wow. I would I would do a consult with her. You can usually get in to see her fairly quickly and she's about the same price I am. So wow. I would do that. Okay. Yeah, so please keep us okay. posted on your sister. I sure will. I totally appreciate it. I pray that you all of are. all of us helping her is just gonna is gonna bring her yeah. bring her bring her yeah. health. Bring her bring her okay. This this, yeah. this is a global healing happening with your sister. And this is, oh. yeah, the power of prayer and these healings is just, it's remarkable, the things that I get to see of how people heal. So I hope, oh. it, I hope it helps. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You You're welcome. You. Take care. Thanks. Hi, Anne. Hi. I'm calling for about my brother who lives in Helmand, Netherlands, and his name is Michael Ryan. Oh. I've just been reading. Yes, my maiden name was Ryan. I've you must be your, way I'm, cool. You must be way cool with the name of Ryan. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Um, Michael Ryan. I'm That's my. Go ahead. Is that what you said, Michael Ryan? Yes. Okay. He has cancer and is, is I'm assuming he's somewhere in the tenants. I've been reading the book again. And I'm pretty sure he's probably five, six, seven, but I don't know that. I'm just, that's what I'd like to know. No, oh, aren't you a sweet sister to call in? Where are you located? I'm in Altoona, Iowa. Oh, I thought you were going to say Pennsylvania. I haven't heard of Altoona, Iowa. It's a sub, it's a um, suburb of Des Moines. Okay, great. All right, here we go. I'm going to hook into you and then I'm going to go over to the Netherlands to pick up Michael. By the way, that's my nephew and God's son's name. So that's a great name. My my nephew is Michael Patrick Ryan. I said, you sound like you're right out of the Irish mafia or something with that name. But <laughs> He's Michael, Ed, or Michael Edwards. So Michael Edward. I love it. Okay, got you. Let's go. East, really far east. I, I watch 
these laser beams go directionally across maps, across oceans, and then they hook into the person. And, and it's a real thing. It's called a bioplasmic streamer. It's an energetic connection that happens. Okay, Michael, I'm talking to your sister, Anne. May I scan you energetically? He's saying no. He's not in the phases of transition. His spirit is in his body, Anne. He's, I don't see the spirit bubble um, with him. What, what I'm talking about, for those of you that think we're talking like secret code here, and hold up my book again for me, will you please? Angelic attendance. What really happens as we transition from this life into the next is my book. And in it, it describes what happens as we're in the dying phases. I call them the 12 phases of transition. And the spirit exits the body through the top of the head. And it hangs on like a cartoon caption bubble, like a speech bubble. And then deceased loved ones and angels take on different configurations as the person gets closer to death. So he is not in any of the phases right now. He could have been earlier today, could have been yesterday because they can move in and out of the phases. They can move around mm -hmm. in the phases too. So let's ask him a couple of questions. Let's just ask him the three questions I always ask when somebody's dying. Are you ready to go? He's saying, absolutely not. Are you in pain? He says, yes, a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. What do you need? <clears throat> better pain management. He needs better pain management. So, uh, is he involved in hospice? Do they have hospice in the Netherlands? They do, but they said he's not far enough along yet. The doctor actually makes house calls still over oh, there. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And he's been over four times and they just kept upping his medicine again this last week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know he's in pain. The reason I asked is they gave him two weeks to two months back in January. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, he's got to be getting closer. Yeah. We all decide where we go, when we go, how we go, who's with us or not when we right. when we go. So, you know, the doctors can say whatever they want. The hospice nurses you read in the book, they told they told us when my mom was dying that she had a couple of weeks. She didn't even last 24 hours. And I could see what was happening energetically. So that's why the 12 phases of transition are so helpful. So download the chart. The 12 phases of transition chart in, go to my website, askjulieryan.com, go to the 12 phases of transition tab. There's a free download of all the 12 stages in a, in a chart. Download yeah. it and save it on your phone. And then just ask in your head or aloud, just ask what phase of transition is Michael in? And you'll hear a number. It'll come in the first thing, the first thought in your head will be a number, and then you can refer to the chart. So anybody that has a loved one at the end of your life, end of their life, excuse me, download the 12 phases of transition chart and store it on your phone and then just ask, and then you can refer to that. Also, anybody that wants a free digital and audiobook copy, just go to julieryangift.com julieryangift.com and we will send you a free digital and audiobook download so i hope that helps that that will Thank are you, you going to try and see him in person i've uh we all went over this fall um okay. so we've all been there this fall and at this point i have son-in-law who's deployed so i'm needed here for the no. grandkids yeah, yeah so yeah no can you talk to him on that. zoom can you talk to them Zoom oh, yeah, or FaceTime? Zoom. Yes, we do have family Zoom meetings about every two or three weeks. Perfect. Perfect. Do that because that really that really does a good job of uh, to suffice if you can't be there in person. Yeah. At least, you know, let your loved ones see you and or hear you. And that really works well. And thank you for your son's service or your daughter, whoever's deployed. And son -in -law, yes, your son-in-law, thank you for his service and for your family's service as well. We appreciate yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Thank you, you bet. Bye. If you want to have a conversation with me, ask julieryanshow.com. If you want to come in on YouTube, we're at Ask Julie Ryan, and you can put a question in the chat. So join us either way. It's 
always a blast because I never know who's going to call. I never know what their question is going to be. And I never know what spirit's going to say. So that's why this is so much fun every week. This, I think it's better than a game show because I never know what's going to happen. So there you go. All right, let's see who our next caller is. We got Brittany. Hi, Brittany. I'm in Texas. My husband and I've been trying to get pregnant for several years. Doctors can't explain why it hasn't happened. Should I try? Should I accept it may not happen or keep holding on to hope? Okay, Brittany, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect into you and I'm going to look and see if you've got any spirit babies attached to your energy field. Because before a baby is conceived, because we all choose our parents, we choose where we're born, to whom we're born, the circumstances into which we're born, when we're born. So our lives will have a trajectory that will help us explore and experience the things that our spirit wants to explore in this lifetime. So here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, down to you or over to you in Texas. All right, got you. You have two baby spirits over your right shoulder. They look like little orbs. They're over your right shoulder. They're attached. They, those are babies that uh, want to have you as their mama. So um, let's talk to those little baby spirits. You guys plan on incarnating? <laughs> incarnating. Both of them said we sure do. I heard we sure do in unison. And let's see what else they have to say. Is mom going to need to use in vitro or IVF? to help her conceive. What I heard, Brittany, was IUI, the inner uterine uh, help. But uh, I don't know if you've talked to a fertility specialist yet, but you may want to explore that just to see if that can help you along the way. But I think you're going to, I think there's a really good chance you're going to have two babies some way. The other thing too is adopted baby spirits, they attach to the mom's energy field before they're conceived as well. They'll come in through the birth mom and that's the portal they get in, but then they go to the adopted mom. And I've seen that many, many times over the years. So they're choosing the mom that raises them. And I think that's really extraordinary. And I see it quite a bit. So whether you're going to birth them or adopt them, you've got two baby spirits in attached to your energy field. So keep us posted. Let us know how, what happens. Okay. We got one from Brenda. Hi, Brenda from Ontario, Canada. My daughter passed one and a half years ago. I've been in so much emotional pain and financial stress and body pain, needing some relief. Please help give me hope. Okay, Brenda, I'm so sorry about your daughter. Your daughter's right next to you. Our heads are big satellite dishes. They receive and they transmit frequencies. Every spirit has a frequency they keep throughout all their lifetimes. And in order to get in touch with our loved ones or your guardian angel or Jesus or Elvis or Moses or whoever, all you have to do is think of them. That tunes your satellite dish head to their frequency. And then you say something to them, either aloud or in your head, silently in your head, and they're going to answer you. And it's going to feel like a thought in your head. But how you know oh, that's see. coming from them is it's that first thing that comes yeah. into your head as fat. Whoever's talking, please mute. We can hear you. Please mute. The first thing that comes into your head as fast as you can snap your fingers is uh, is how it works. That's what I was talking about with Anne, with her brother, Michael. Is It's that first thought that comes into your head, whether it's from a deceased loved one or an angel or spirit in general, God, the universe, your spirit guides, your angels, everybody. So that's how it works. Ask her questions, say things to your daughter, and then know that she's going to answer you. She's saying, mom, I'm around you all the time. And she's saying, okay, she's saying, ask her to come to you in your dreams. Because oftentimes that's an easy way for spirit to communicate with us because our brains get to rest 
And every night when we sleep, our energy frequency goes back to the factory presetting level, which is that of spirit, which is a really high vibration. When we're in grief, it's a low vibration. It feels bad. Spirit doesn't communicate on the I feel crappy channels because it's a high vibration. Spirits vibrate really fast because they don't have the density of a body. So when we ask our loved ones to come to us in a dream, oftentimes they will. And oftentimes that's the easiest way for them to communicate with us when we're in grief. So give that a try and see if that helps. AskJulieRyanShow.com if you want to have a conversation with me. If you're coming in on the YouTube live stream, we're at Ask Julie Ryan. You can put a question in the chat and we're answering both. So let's see who's next. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Julie. How are you, my girl? I'm doing good. I'm in Whitewater, Wisconsin. Okay, terrific. Thanks for joining saw, us. Yeah, I saw you on Next Level Soul with Alex and just a fabulous interview. Thank you. He's my buddy. He's a good egg. Yeah, he's my yeah, buddy. He really he's kind of like, yeah. I, I, I say he's kind of like my little brother. I tease him. I said, you're like my little, my newest little brother. So oh, we laugh about that. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us. You got a question? Yes, yeah, I do. Um, I've been having hearing loss. I, I lost mm -hmm. like 30% hearing in my one ear at a job that I was at with a an old kind of pinging data plate machine and it made this mm -hmm. high pitched noise. And within like two weeks, I could barely hear out of my one ear. And um, now over the over the years, it's like the other one is starting to go too. And I've always had a little bit of motion sickness since I was a kid, but now it's like, I can't even be a passenger in a car anymore. So I don't know if the, the hearing loss is, you know, doing something with inner ear and my balance or, but I can't swing. I can't, you know, hardly rock in a rocking chair. It's, I just get this motion sickness. I think it's just all tied together. So if you could take a look, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have the the um, vertigo? Do you have the spins as well? Or it's just more of a balance thing when you're moving? Yeah, not really. I don't think I have vertigo. I mean, once in a while, I when I'm walking, I go tipping, 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 and I got to kind of bring myself back, but it wow. doesn't happen too okay. often. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me let me get you on my radar, Lisa, and let's see okay. what's going on. So here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to you in Wisconsin. All right. Got you. Shooting energy from your feet up through the top of your head. It's going to your left ear first. The mm -hmm. hologram of you in my mind's eye. The, I always watch to see where the energy goes. And a lot of the time, I'll look at you first from behind because it's easier if it's if I'm looking at you from behind, it's your left and it's my left too, instead of saying your left, my right, True. too confusing. Yeah. So, all right. So your left ear is the one where you lost the hearing mm -hmm. first. Okay. Yeah. Going in there. You've got scar tissue in there, Lisa. And so scar tissue looks like, imagine a spider web, but with more fibrous strands. Okay. And I'm watching this. Is, so this is the healing. I'm watching a corkscrew in there that is just cutting that scar tissue. It's spinning really fast in your, in your eustachian tube and in your ear. Uh, so another example uh, from a human perspective would be you know, at the nail salon, when they have those Dremel drills and it's got a sanding little bit on the end and they'll they'll sand your nails down to get the acrylic or the color off. That's what mm -hmm. this reminds me of. But it's got a it's got a blade on it. So it's sharp. And and I've they have these in um surgery all the time. And they will they'll clean out scar tissue with that. They call it a shaver, interestingly enough. So that's happening. So going in there, you've got did you have ruptured eardrums? You've got your eardrum looks kind of a wreck too. You've got scar tissue on your eardrum itself. Have you had ear infections in addition to working in the plant? Um, a, 
a little, not not a whole lot, but a, a few of them back years ago. I haven't had any recently, but yeah, okay. I had a series of them in a row. Okay. Perhaps when you were a child even too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The eardrum is smooth. And when I see what I will call keloid scars on there, you know, keloids are scars that don't heal flat. They're raised a little bit. So what I'm watching is I'm watching those scars get removed from that eardrum. I'm watching that get those scars get cut out. And then we're using stem cell energy to regenerate the rest of the eardrum where those scars were removed. When I see, and again, when I talk about I see, I'm seeing it in my mind's eye. I'm seeing a hologram of you. I'm seeing these things in my mind's eye. Stem cell energy is going to regenerate this. When I see keloid scars on an eardrum, it changes the reverberation of the sound and affects hearing. And I've done this thousands of times with clients and people who've called into the show over the years. So imagine stem cell energy, light amber colored gel has sparkles in it. Got to have sparkles because it's woo woo. You know, it's got to be fun, right? And yeah. it reminds me of this hair gel when I was a kid called Dippity Do in the 60s mm -hmm. and 70s. You remember that? Yeah. Okay. All right. We're, we're um, you know, we're betraying our age. I don't care. <laughs> Young people listening, if you don't know what Dippity Do is, look it up. It's hilarious. So that's in there. And then there's a vortex spinning outside of your ear, Lisa. And what it's doing is it's regenerating new new uh, eardrum tissue. It's called the tympanic membrane, actually. In the meantime, those corkscrews are roto rootering They're cleaning out the inside of your eustachian tube. So let's, let's let that left ear work. Let me go in the right ear and see what's going on there. Same thing. You have the same thing on that ear. It's just worse on the, worse on the left ear. So cutting out where those those keloid scars are and uh, stem cell energy, vortex outside, spinning it. In the meantime, there's a corkscrew. You've got corkscrews going on both sides of your head. They're going to meet in the middle of your head. So we're just irrigating that out, any kind of debris that's in there. Okay, now those membranes are being adjusted. When I watch it healing on the ear. I watch musical notes energy and also sound wave energy bounce off that membrane that is the eardrum. And then I watch it get pulled in different directions, like 10 o'clock position on a clock, five o'clock position, three o'clock, seven o'clock, one o'clock. This is, I'm describing what I'm watching in your left ear. And it reminds me of a Think of a pair of bongo drums. It's got a membrane on the top and how tightly that membrane is pulled will determine the tone of the drum. Every drum's different. Same thing with the eardrum. This is the healing I always see. So the same thing is happening on the right ear as well. And so we've got that going on. I always wondered why I saw sound waves and musical notes get tested on the eardrums. And when I had this recording studio, I'm in my recording studio, that's what this red, this is all soundproof foam in here. When I had this put in my home, I asked the audio engineer about it. And he said, musical notes have a different frequency than regular sound waves. And that's why they can elicit an emotional response. I thought that was yeah. So, yeah. all right. Sound waves and musical notes are bouncing properly off those ears, both of them. Cool. Cool. Wow. Thank so you so much. So hopefully that will help. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Keep us posted on how you're doing. I will. Thank you very okay. much. You bet. AskJulieRyanShow.com. If you want to have a question with me or conversation with me, ask a question, have a conversation. If you're coming in on YouTube live stream, we're at Ask Julie Ryan, and you can put a question in the chat. Okay, here's the update on the gal that called in a couple of weeks ago. Her name was Mary Beth, 
and she called in from Columbia, Missouri. And so she sent me this email and I thought, oh, how extraordinary. She said, hi, Julie, last month during your Thursday night show, I called in and you selected me. We talked about my daughter who had died from suicide and you told me to look for a ballerina, which would be a sign from her. So her daughter told me to tell her, okay, mom, look for a ballerina and that will let you know that I'm with you. She went on to say, Mary Beth went on to say, we went to London right after your show and I saw, saw a gold ballerina on top of the Victoria Palace Theater. She sent me a picture of it too. It's a statue of a gold ballerina. I mean, talk about a serious ballerina sign. She said, I knew it was the sign from my daughter, Christina, you were talking about. How can I ever thank you, Mary Beth? So Mary Beth saw her golden ballerina in London. And uh, I think that's a great example of how Spirit's going to give us things in the form of symbols, pictures, words, phrases, things like that. It may not make sense to us at the moment that we hear it. When we think about it, it may make sense later, or it may pertain to something that hasn't happened yet, like with Mary Beth. She hadn't been to London yet and seen the gold ballerina statue. So I thought that was remarkable. I have another story for you too that I'll tell you in a couple of minutes, but let's take another caller and see what they have to ask. Hi, Denez. Hi, Julie. How are you, my girl? I'm well, thank you. Terrific. You look beautiful. You're all dolled up. Thank you. <laughs> I had a meeting tonight for work. <laughs> I can tell. You look very lovely. Please tell everybody you. where you're located. I am located in Midlothian, Virginia, which is a suburb of Richmond, Virginia. Right. Okay. You got a question for me? I do. My um, my 90-year-old mother-in-law has lived with us for several years and she has moderate Alzheimer's. And mm -hmm. since she turned 90 a couple of weeks ago, it's it's almost been like a switch in her brain. And I, mm -hmm. and I almost feel like she's reached 90 and she's maybe said, I'm done. Um, mm -hmm. We've just noticed some very noticeable changes. And I'm concerned that she may be in the transition phase. Okay. And if so, where, if, if she's in that phase yet? Yeah. And again, that's the 12 phases of transition that we talked about earlier that I talk about in my book, Angelic Attendance, what really happens as we transition from this life into the next. Uh, what's her first name? Wilda. Wilda. W-I-L-D-A? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading to you in Virginia. See, I can talk like a Southerner if I need to. <laughs> okay, got you. Shooting energy from you to Wilda. She's in phase nine of the 12 phases of transition. So that means okay. she's around, She's surrounded by angels. Denez, you know this because you've seen the 12 I phases. Do. So she's surrounded by angels. There is a vortex that's forming above her head and it's going to help her spirit bubble that speech bubble that i talked about earlier will help her separate her spirit from her body and uh there are angels on either side of the spirit bubble there were lots of angels around her her parents are at her feet many thousands of other spirits are there to welcome her i call them the welcome to heaven committee it's really a glorious sight. Mm -hmm. So let's ask her my three questions. Wilda, are you ready to go? More than ready. Mm -hmm. She's saying, are you in pain? She's saying, not really. She's saying she feels numb a lot of the time. She feels numb. She says all she wants to do is sleep. She doesn't really, mm -hmm. she just doesn't want to do anything. She just wants to sleep. You're nodding your head. So she's sleeping a lot more. Yeah. Uh, she's saying, so what do you need? Just comfort care. Okay, what do you mean by comfort care? Keep me warm, keep me clean, keep me safe. That's it. She said, I don't, I don't, she doesn't really even need food or water, she's saying. 
So mm-hmm. is her appetite really diminished as well? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. They do at the end of life. Mm-hmm. They they sleep yeah. more. I've seen it. Yeah. The appetite goes away. And for heaven's sakes, if she asks for something really crazy that she wants to eat, like a hot fudge sundae or something, give it to her. Yeah. Right. There are people yeah. that say, well, I don't, it's not healthy for her. I'm thinking it may be the last thing she eats. Give her what she wants. So, yeah. so do that. And, Thank and you. You, know, you just ask what phase of transition is willed in and you'll hear, you'll hear that answer just boom in your head. I talked to a client today and it's really, I think now this was for you because her mother-in-law passed recently. She and her husband were in the room with her and she knows about the 12 phases of transition and how the vortex forms above the head to help that spirit separate from the body. And she said, we could hear, she said it was like there was a tornado in the house. She said, we could feel this vortex that was spinning. We could feel like wind blowing in the house. She said, we could see the lampshades and the lamps and stuff rattling. She said, it kind of scared my husband. She said, I knew what was going on because I read your book. And she said she could hear it. She said, you hear about a tornado, that it has a real distinctive sound. She said they could hear it. She said it lasted for like a minute or two and then it calmed down and then it really came on strong and and then her mother-in-law died, like she took her last breath. And so I asked her, I said, well, that was the vortex. And she said, absolutely. And I said, was anything damaged in the house? And she said, no. But she said it was like having a tornado in our house. And yeah. and I said, well, what did your husband say about that? And she said, he, he said, there's no way he would have ever believed it had she not been with him. And she said, I was so glad he was there because I would have thought I was imagining it, but I didn't. So yeah. I, that's the first time I've heard that from anybody who really felt it with that much force inside the house. But I thought that was remarkable. So I think I think I heard that today because it was intended for you. Thank you so much. So welcome. Good luck with all that. Look for the little miracles along the way. And Thank they'll you. be plenty. Yeah. They Anybody will. that wants angelic attendance, free copy, just go to julieryangift.com and we'll send you a link so you can have a free digital and audio book download of the book. And you're welcome to buy the paper book, paperback book, easy for me to say as well. But, uh, you know, the digital and the audio book works well, too. So there's that. The other thing that I had happen today, I was out running errands late this afternoon, and I had a client this morning who had lost her son. And he was 29. He died very suddenly in a car accident. And one of the signs that he sends her is she said she sees an Aqua Mini Cooper car. And she said Aqua is just such a random color. And she said, every time I see it, I know it's from him because I see it driving around town. Well, today when I was running errands, you guys, I saw an Aqua Mini Cooper here in Birmingham, Alabama. And I thought, oh, that's Josh. That's, you know, your mama told me that that's your sign for her. So whenever I have a session with a client, I always send a follow-up email with a lot of resource links about what we talk about. And in my note to her, I said, oh, by the way, Josh sent me an Aqua Mini Cooper today too. I mean, I was out maybe for an hour in the rain, driving around, running my errands, and there was that Aqua Mini Cooper that drove right by me. So thanks, Josh. I appreciated this sign too. Okay, Trudy. Hi, Julie. Just wondering if someone listens to your show at a later date with a similar medical issue to someone you helped online, can they be helped or healed too by listening to it? Absolutely. Another benefit to listening to the show. And I hear this all the time from clients. And that's why I always say envision what I'm talking about, because that healing 
is going to go into your body when you envision it because the body doesn't know the difference between something that's real and something that's coming from your brain. The body's always going to follow what the brain's telling it. Think of when you watch a scary movie. Well, your brain knows it's pretend, but your heart might feel like it's getting ready to jump out of your chest at any moment. Same thing. Remember, time doesn't exist in the spirit world. Time's a human creation. So yes, great question, Trudy. Thanks so much for that. Alrighty, everybody, that's it for this week. Remember to subscribe. Remember to leave a comment. Remember to please share with your family and friends. When you subscribe, you're entered into the drawing for a free class. When you leave a comment, whether on a podcast network or on YouTube, you're entered into a free drawing for a session with me. Sign up for Angelic Attendant Training, 18th and 19th. And in the meantime, sending you lots of love from Sweet Home, Alabama. Mwah! Bye, everybody. See you next time. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan. And like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com.